There is so much significance surrounding this eclipse. It really is hard to know where to start. So I think the best place to start is at the very beginning. The mapping of future eclipses has been well documented in ancient times. And according to classic Maya prediction of solar eclipses by Harvey M. Bricker, a Harvard anthropologist, even those great mathematicians, the ancient Mayans, were said to have accurately predicted a solar eclipse that occurred in 1991. However, it wasn't until 1715 that Edmund Haley published a map predicting the time and path of a coming solar eclipse, and thus began what is now called the Golden Age of Eclipse Mapping. This success made Haley an establishment darling, and he was rewarded by his masters with a membership to the Royal Society at age 22, and then appointed the second Astronomer Royal in 1720. Yes, Astronomer Royal, because we know just how much attention the bloodlines that have taken control of our world have on the celestial movements of our heavens. And why wouldn't they, when they know the truth about the great year cycle mankind exists within? It's no secret that the Vatican has one of the most sophisticated observatories in the world and one of the most advanced telescopes which they proudly nicknamed Lucifer. They know we are approaching the end of the great year and over the centuries have carefully and ruthlessly positioned themselves to control our lives from the shadows. The final nail in humanity's coffin was when the Vatican instructed their henchmen to set out on a rampage and steal the knowledge of all the other cultures under the guise of bringing Christ to the pagans. But in truth, they were looting these people of all their sacred knowledge and locking it away from mankind so they could use it for their own agenda. And as we know, knowledge is power. So if we are to believe the education institutions, which by the way, were all established by the Catholic Church, it was 300 years ago that modern humanity mastered the art of mapping future eclipses. And this is going to be very important for what I am about to relay here. Because I see many Christian Americans celebrating this eclipse as something wonderful and heralding the return of Christ Jesus. But what I am about to reveal shows something much more darker and sinister at play. And it has been in the making for centuries. The Great American Eclipse will occur on April 8th, 2024. But what makes it so significant is that it is the second eclipse over North America in seven years, accompanying another eclipse that occurred on August 21st, 2017. Thus, when overlapping the paths of totality of these two eclipses, it makes a cross over some very significant towns. Towns that were established and named around 250 to 300 years ago. But let's first look at the symbol of the cross and its esoteric meaning. The symbol of the cross relates to the Paleo-Hebrew Tav. Tav represents the 22nd and last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And it relates to truth, but can also be seen as the sum of everything. On the Kabbalah Tree of Life, the symbol of Tav can be found in Ketha the Crown, 
Tipareth the Heart and the Path of Tao. The Path of Tao represents the path of the soul, from the creator to spirit to material body and from material body to spirit back to creator. So it's not surprising that the two most important seraphots and the path of Tao, which represents the spirit, all contain Tav. The symbol of Tav is made up of the two Hebrew letters Dalith and Nun. The letters Dalith Nun spell Dan in Hebrew, and Dan is another symbol for the firstborn divine man, otherwise known as the Christ. But let's look further. The cross is also the letter X in the English alphabet. It's the 24th letter and thus has a numerological value of 24, which reduces to 6. 6 is the number on the Seraphot Tipareth, representing the heart. If we look at the symbol of the cross in relation to Roman numerology, it equates to the number 10. And when you add the first 10 numbers of the Fibonacci sequence, it equates to the number 88. The number 88 is one of the most sacred numbers because it's symbolically connected to the divine souls, otherwise known as the children of God, the tribes of Israel, the four creatures, or the Christed. That's why we see symbols relating to these divine souls represented on the number 10 tarot card. And a double X is also represented on the judgment card. And as we have just seen, Tav is related to the heart in the symbolism of the Kabbalah tree of life. And the two Hebrew letters, Dalith and Nun, which create Tav, spell Dan in Hebrew, and Dan also translates to judgment. So if we look at the sign of the cross of these two eclipses over the last seven years, it's not something heralding a joyful time for Christian Americans. It's a warning to them that judgment is coming. And here's where it takes a darker turn. The Antichrist infiltrated Christianity using the cover of the Catholic Church 17 centuries ago. And at that time, they took control of the scriptures with the backing of Emperor Constantine. Since that time, they have successively passed down power to where they are today. In fact, you can trace the line of popes all the way back to the Council of Nicaea. We already know that they publicly announced that they could predict the paths of solar eclipses for the last 300 years. But what we also know is that the ancient Mayans had that skill too, and the Catholic Church pillaged the knowledge of the ancient Mayans 500 years ago. So is it really any mystery why the towns that this very significant eclipse casts a shadow over with a cross are very symbolic when it comes to biblical scripture? Do people believe that the antichrists who have been working from the shadows to cause so much suffering in our world for many, many centuries wouldn't use this opportunity to bring their own form of judgment as a way to punish the nation on God's kingdom with the most people who proclaim to be Christians? Let's start with Carbondale, the closest town in the middle of the intersecting paths of totality. The region of Carbondale is also known as Little Egypt, where the nearby town of Cairo is located. One of the parks in the immediate vicinity of Carbondale is called the Garden of the Gods. Carbon is also connected to the number 666 because it has six protons, six electrons, and six neutrons. Now, for those who understand who the real enemy of mankind are, the names of these towns are not a divine sign from God, but a symbolic way the most evil among us are mocking the Creator, His children, and humanity. During the 2017 solar eclipse, 
Seven towns in America called Salem fell under the path of totality. Salem, Oregon, Salem, Idaho, Salem, Wyoming, Salem, Nebraska, Salem, Missouri, Salem, Kentucky, and Salem, South Carolina. Now, before we begin to look further into these biblical stories, it's important that we understand they are just parables. These events are not to be taken literally. They are to be understood as symbolic stories which encode the truths beneath them. This is why Jesus tells us in Mark 4, 11, 12, that only those unworthy of the truths encoded in these parables will take them literally. And thus, they will remain forever blind and deaf to the true meanings behind them. So let's look at the verses which mention Salem. First, there is this one from Genesis 14, 18, 20 about Mechizeldek and Abram who are symbolic for the divine children of God. And Mechizeldek, king of Salem, bought out bread and wine and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram by God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. Those verses are from a parable about Sodom and Gomorrah. It is well known that America has fallen and symbolically become the epitome of what Sodom and Gomorrah represented in this story. However, at the end of the verse, where God delivers the enemies into their hands, this is what the Antichrists are about to do to Americans. But they will be defeated by their enemies, and Jesus will not be there to save them because the appointed time for the illumination of the Christed, otherwise known as the Transfiguration, has not yet arrived, and the Antichrists know it. Here's another verse which mentions Salem. This one is from Psalm 76, 1-3. In Judah, God is known. His name is great in Israel. His abode has been established in Salem, his dwelling place in Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows, the shield, the sword, and the weapons of war. Selah. Once again in Psalm 76, we see the reoccurring themes of war and judgment. However, the Antichrists have placed themselves above humanity as our gods and they will be the ones to enact judgment on Americans who are a nation and people constantly at war with others. Now, if we look at the path of the second upcoming eclipse on the 8th of April, we can see that it not only casts a penumbral shadow over a town called Jonah in Oklahoma, but there are only seven towns in the entire nation of the United States called Nineveh, and they either fall in the path of 100% totality or in the prenumbral shadow. Those seven American towns are Nineveh, Texas, Nineveh, Missouri, Nineveh, Indiana, Nineveh, Ohio, Nineveh, Pennsylvania, Nineveh, Virginia, and Nineveh, New York. In Genesis chapter 10, it tells us that Nineveh was built by Nimrod and that Nimrod also built the Tower of Babel. The character in the story of Nineveh is called Jonah. He went into Nineveh and warned the people to repent and change their ways, or God would destroy their city in 40 days. 
Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. When you understand that the Antichrists have now taken control of our world and have positioned themselves as our gods, this does not bode well for Americans and the West. If we calculate 40 days after the eclipse on the 8th of April, that will bring us to the 18th of May, the religious holy day of the Ascension of Christ. The next day is another holy day called Pentecost, which represents the illumination or transfiguration of the rest of the Christed or children of God. Remember at the beginning of the video when we were looking at the symbol of the cross and determined its numerological value in the English alphabet was 24? Well, the 24 elders also represents the illumination of the Christed. Around the throne were 24 thrones and seated on the thrones were 24 elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. Revelation 4, 4. Revelation 4 also mentions the four living creatures, winged man, winged lion, winged eagle, and winged ox. And as I mentioned earlier, these are symbols that represent the divine children of God. And the cross equates to 10 in Roman numerals. And the 10th card in the tarot is connected to the four living creatures. The place we know as modern day Israel, which was created in 1947, is not the Israel of the Bible, unless you relate it to Revelation 2, 9. This place is a creation of the Antichrists who are using these people to play out their script and bring their own version of biblical Armageddon to mankind and America is about to play a big part in that script. Now let's go back to the symbol of Nineveh. Not only did Nimrod build Nineveh, but he also built the Tower of Babel. Look at our world right now and consider this as I summarize this parable. God destroyed the Tower of Babel because the people building it were getting too corrupted and powerful. He made them all speak different languages so that they would find it more difficult to collaborate. Remind you of anything when you look around at us all arguing about politics and race and religion and gender and morality, etc, etc. We are now so divided, we can't communicate with each other anymore. So there is no doubt that the evil in control of our world, who stole the knowledge, infiltrated the churches, the education system, science, media, our financial system, our healthcare system, and our governments have been plotting to bring about our downfall for many, many centuries. And this eclipse was an opportunity that they could not allow to pass without using it to bring about a symbolic reckoning to America and the West. But this is also a celestial sign at the end of an age for those who have done the work and taken the time to seek out knowledge that was left for us by our divine ancestors. This eclipse will happen in the constellation of Pisces, which represents the last age of the great year. And the symbol of the fish also represents Jesus and the Christed. At the time of the eclipse, the sun will be positioned right next to the star Ravati. In Hindu, Ravati means the shining one or the shining light who shows the path to others. The myth of Ravati is about a divine female who demands God marry her to the strongest warrior on earth. 
However, Ravati must serve a penance during the lower ages, but is eventually rewarded by her father, meeting her soulmate Balarama, and then together they will make passage into the Satya Yuga, the Golden Age. There will also be a rare and visible straight alignment of the planets Mars, Saturn, Venus and Mercury with the star Regulus. Regulus is called the Lion's Heart because it is the brightest star in the constellation of Leo the Lion and it is said to represent his heart. The head of Leo is also said to be a sickle. So we have yet another connection to the heart and judgment. Remember at the beginning of the video when we saw the connection to Tipareth on the Kabbalah Tree of Life which is positioned at the heart and the sickle represents the reaping of the wheat and tars at judgment. This verse from Proverbs also alludes to the weighing of the heart at judgment. If you say, Behold, we did not know this. Does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who keeps watch over your soul know it? And will he not repay man according to his work? And all of this is occurring as Beetlejuice on the shoulder of Orion is experiencing its brightest outburst in recorded history. Now let's look at some of the different religious holy days which are also converging with this rare celestial event. On the day of the eclipse, it's Rosh Chodesh Nisan for the Hebrew year 5784. And if we reduce the year 5784 to a single number, it equates to six. Yet another connection to that very sacred number representing Tipareth, the heart on the Kabbalah tree of life. Rosh Chodesh is the first day of the new month on the Hebrew calendar and it marks the day the tribes of Israel, who as we know symbolize the divine children of God, knew that they were going to be reinstated to their rightful positions. The 8th of April is also the day the Chinese celebrate the birth of Buddha, which is their symbol for the firstborn divine son of God. For Muslims, Ramadan ends on the day of the eclipse. Ramadan is one of the most sacred times for Muslims as they believe it was during Ramadan that divine revelation was sent down from God in the form of the Quran. In this sacred time they are to perform acts of charity and contemplate on their connection to their creator. Now if it's not enough that we have all of these very significant events and holy days surrounding this great eclipse we also have a very unusual comet which will make its way across the heavens in the month of April too. This comet has been allocated the very boring name of 12P Pons Brooks, but it is anything but boring. So far they have reported unusual behavior from this comet where it seems to be experiencing periodical outbursts these outbursts have given the comet a very unusual appearance which has led to the media dubbing it the Green Devil Comet. At the time of the eclipse the comet will be in the constellation of Aries. Aries is a symbol that relates to divine knowledge possessed by Jesus the firstborn divine son of God. On the 21st of April the comet will reach perihelion in the constellation of Taurus. This is when it will be at its brightest and the closest to the Sun. Taurus the Bull is also another symbol connected to the Divine Son of God. It is a similar symbol to the Lamb. It represents the Divine portion of God within the soul of the Christ and Divine Children of God. On the 22nd of April the very next day after it reaches perihelion is the Easter holy day of Passover. Then on June 2nd the comet will be the closest to earth and in the constellation Lepus. Lepus is a constellation located below and immediately south of Orion 
and is sometimes represented as a hare being chased by Orion or by Orion's hunting dogs. The rabbit and hare are very sacred symbols, for they represent a virtuous soul seeking out knowledge of their divine nature and their creator. It is literally the symbolic representation of seek and ye shall find, and it's why the seeking out of knowledge is often referred to as going down the rabbit hole. Unfortunately, this symbol has been corrupted by the Antichrist, and now it's connected to a psyops that encouraged the gullible to believe that they were getting secret information from an insider. Mary is often depicted with a white rabbit in religious art, and the rabbit is very prevalent in Easter symbolism because it's related to sacred knowledge, purity, and the divine children of God. According to traditional Chinese, the constellation Lepus is located within the western quadrant of the sky, which is symbolized as the white tiger of the west. And then we have another unusual occurrence, which is also adding to this convergence of events. In late April, in the middle of these intersecting paths of the eclipse, billions of cicadas will make an appearance when two broods will emerge together for the first time since 1803. Finally, the last time two solar eclipses cross paths over the New Madrid Fault, as these two eclipses of 2017 and 2024 will, was in 1806 and 1811. Two months after the eclipse of 1811, up until March 1812, more than 200 moderate to large earthquakes occurred on the New Madrid Fault. These were the most long-lasting and damaging earthquakes in recorded history, with three of the quakes making the list of America's top earthquakes, with the strongest being an 8.8. Unfortunately, there are many Christian Americans who are being led astray by false prophets and false teachings. And they're celebrating this eclipse as something wonderful and joyful when the absolute opposite is true. This eclipse is a final wake up call to all who have strayed from the narrow path and followed the wide path of ease and indulgence, including the majority of Christian Americans who are no longer following the teachings of Christ. The Antichrists have made it clear they are going to use this celestial event as a symbolic opportunity to punish Americans because of their self-proclaimed connection to Christ. You see, by claiming themselves the greatest Christian nation on earth, they have now unknowingly brought this wrath of the Antichrists upon themselves. The presence of the comet just reinforces this as comets are well known to be harbingers of change and not in a good way. Now I'm not saying that this is going to happen on the day of the eclipse or even the day after, but this is definitely a harbinger telling us that we are nearing the end of this great year and those who have control of our world have something very evil planned for the West following this significant celestial event and it will start in America. There are also many many more significant connections to this eclipse that I haven't covered in this video as I didn't want the video to be longer than it already is. Lastly, I don't want to frighten people but to warn. The signs are clear from both the divine and those who have set themselves against God and his children. Use this information as a way to fortify your soul and prepare for the coming dark days. And always remember, knowledge is power.